day. From First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. It's week three of the NFL preseason on EA Sports. seen a few moments ago here it is it's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel these folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the minnesota vikings and the cleveland browns Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis with you. And now we sit, CD, at week three of the preseason. And this is the one that the coaches probably think is pretty valuable, right? Certainly. This is the dress rehearsal. This is the one where your starters are going to play. You might even game plan a little bit more than you do with a normal preseason game. And then you've got to decide, do you bring them back after halftime and get them going again in the third quarter so they're ready to go when the regular season begins? I'm eager to see how these coaches will handle that. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they'll be led out by the all-time leader in terms of passing yards in NFL history. Their 41-year-old quarterback, Drew Brees. Total relentlessness of consistency. Almost like a machine. If you watch him in practice after every throw, he resets his feet, visualizes all the other options on a play. So if he has to do it in a game, it's already there, has the muscle memory. I start calling him AI for artificial intelligence. Whatever defense does during the game, he absorbs it and then uses it against them as the game moves on. And he's up in it after a gain of four, up to the 25-yard line. The 25-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Second From the 25 on second down, Breeze and complete to Zach Ertz. Breeze pass. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First and 10, Taylor now. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Yards to go. Now Breeze on third down. Got an open man finding Jefferson. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Give him 18 there and give the Vikings a first down. First down, Minnesota. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. The ball carrier. The tackle made by Michael Pierce. On second down. It's Taylor. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door. First and goal. First and goal, Minnesota. Here's Breeze. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Justin Jefferson, the rookie, his intended receiver. But it'll be second and goal. Brings up second and goal. 
Now Taylor. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. From the five-yard line with this opening drive yield six. This is third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Number 18. Justin Jefferson there to make the grab. And the Vikings take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Robbie, Robbie Gold on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's polished off by a Viking score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked out officially at the 21. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. Leading them out, the man known as Danny Dimes, their second-year quarterback from Duke, Daniel Jones. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him <laughs> along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy who springs for the good stuff. A loss of two there, second down. Now Kamara. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Alvin Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. The 27-yard line. Brings up second down. Now Jones. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. The lightning rod, J.J. Watt with a sack. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. From the gun, Jones. He'll get this one underneath to Camara, And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were niffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. And here now the putter, Martin, booming this one away. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Lawrence, a gain of a yard. Brings up second and nine. Now Breeze. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He was covered by Antoine Winfield. From the gun on third down, Breeze. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. 
And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Kenneth Murray on the cover. Here's Jones, throwing again on second and 10. He's got his all-pro receiver, Michael Thomas. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 11 yards there, first down. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. They'll run. This is Kamara. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. On second down, Kamara. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by this Vikings defense. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. from the gun Jones that's incomplete but there is a flag down so hang on a big call that's coming defense. on third down defense. Oh. thought they were going to force a fourth down instead P.I. gives him the first and that's frustrating because you think you've taken them really deep into the count haven't you instead you've got to start all over that can really really be it's caught at the 10 and finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A big pickup of 38. I think we already know that this guy's going to be ready when they ring the bell for week one. That play, almost routine for him, but still, nice to know that he's still got it. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Throwing Jones. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Four-yard gain. Brings up second and goal. They'll run it with Kamara. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. Stop short of the goal line. A gain of one yard on the play. It's now third. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The first quarter with the score, Viking seven, Browns nothing. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Back to throw. Jones. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Darren Fells there to make the grab. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end comes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. They find themselves open for an easy touchdown. Austin Seibert on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Sam Bartso all even at seven now as they kick it away. 
Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. yard line. And out now come the Vikings. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Well, I think that was good strategy there, trying to go right back to him after the last completion. But this time, the defense was all over him, and they got there to break that one up. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Five yard pickup on the play. And then from the gun, it's Breeze. Now Breeze lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. No coach or team's ever happy when someone has a turnover. But if there's ever a good time to do it, preseason. Yeah, right <laughs> now. You know that come regular season, he's going to be ready to go. And maybe he'll remember, yeah, I don't want to do this when it comes time for the games to count. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover. But the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here and they've got it inside the 10 at the eight good. it's a really nice 15 yard pickup and now it's first and goal we use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field in this case it really fits doesn't it how about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving Try to pound it in, Kamara. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. From the two now, second and goal. A six-yard pickup. Brings up second and They'll goal. run out of the gun with Kamara. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns have taken the lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Here's Cyber now to add the extra point. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. Here's Martin now following the score as he'll send this one away. Taking it about the one. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Vikings take over first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Well, they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. He was unable to shake free there. and They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Throwing again on second down. Breeze. He'll drop this down to Taylor. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. 
Shotgun now for Breeze. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And he will have a Vikings first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Play action, Breeze. That one caught by the rookie, Chase Claypool. Breeze, pass. A gain of six there on first. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Brings up second and four. At the 43 yard, a give to Taylor. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 48-yard line. They run with Taylor. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. They'll run with Taylor. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. The Vikings on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Not much on that. Now Breeze lost the football. Carlos Dunlap. Daniel Jones sacked. Offensively lucky they're able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. Here's Tressway now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted at, own spotted at the 14-yard line. line. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally... He feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day, because otherwise, he can really decimate him. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. And he's got a first down following a pickup of about 13 as we will take a pause here for the two-minute warning. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. From the gun, Jones. This is complete to Michael Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of a good pick up there, a 22. Another good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Jones throwing on first down gets this to a standout receiver Thomas and he is tackled inside the 40 not quite to the 35 another connection between the two this one good for 12 and a first down they'll tussle for it and this is going to be caught and he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped 15 more there and they're on a roll it's another first down well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, 
Nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Jones on first down. Johnson with a completion over the middle. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Jones now from the gun. He'll throw. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. From eight yards out. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And that'll give us momentum going into the second half. Give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Cybered on for the PAT. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to So that drives seven plays in length. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. So after the touchdown, Martin now on to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Vikings take over first and 10 at their own. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game. But just yeah, that's going to be intercepted. Malcolm Jenkins, the pro bowler. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. I know some teams are leery about playing cover, too, because a strong safety is not usually a terrific cover guy. But in this case, he played it perfectly. Read the football and went and made the interception. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Jones. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it a second down. A six yard Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. To throw again on second down. Jones on the crossing route, complete. That's Johnson. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Here's Jones on first and 10. On the check down, he finds Kamara. Jones pass. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Most teams in the league hitting the three-quarter pole in the preseason. The whole league will be in action next Thursday night to wrap it all up. And then we start for real a week after that with the NFL kickoff game. In our game, expect to see the starters for at least one more drive. Something to look forward to as we get you back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. First and 10 at their own 23. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on 
here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. One yard gain. Brings up second and nine. Again, it's Camaro. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Carrier. Jacob Phillips on the tackle. A one-yard pickup. Brings up third and eight. Off play action. Jones. Got a man. He finds Sanders. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, he's certainly trying to earn his way into some more looks in the offense once the regular season heats up. If he continues to make plays like that, I think QB1 will look his way a little more often once the regular season begins. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. From the gun, it's a run for Camara. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Another big play there by Aaron Donald, the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year in 2017 and 18. We know he can rush the passer. He's also dominant in the run game. The quickness for a man his size often defeats the offensive lineman trying to block him. Second and 12 now at the 44-yard line. Operating from the gun, Jones. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. In that time for the sack, say hello to Chandler Jones. They need to stop to get back into this game, and here's one right to start the third quarter. Yeah, anytime you go to the lockers with that two, three-score deficit, you're right. You need that stop, get the football back, and they've done just that. Series to series, play to play. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the gun, Jones. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Camaro. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. That's certainly playing down a distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Sam Martin now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They go to the ground again with Taylor. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. A three-yard gain on the play. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Complete to Devontae Parker. It's a gain of the last drive he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know there's a quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win the game in the end. Ready? Five, nine. Fifty-six. That's a screen. Ah. Check 26. Check 
On first down, Taylor. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and he gained five yards on it, and be frank about it. Most offenses don't expect to have five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. They run once more with Taylor. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns 44. Five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. A five-yard gain on the play. And the Vikings, they'll run on first down. Taylor, this will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. The tackle made a That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. A four-yard pickup on the ball. On first down, it's Taylor. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. The last run good for two, here's second and eight. Two yards on the pickup. It's second. Now the rookie runner from App State, it's Darrington Evans. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine. And they need 10 yards out of it on third. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. And that'll do it for the end of the third quarter. You're watching preseason football on EA Sports. The Vikings on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and ten. Throw right side complete to Carter. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 11 more yards there. This methodical drive continues. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. From the red zone now, Simeon. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Trevor Simeon sacked. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast, and a big sack. This has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. Another try after the first down sack. Simeon, that's complete to Moss out of the backfield. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. It's a gain of eight, and it brings up third down. On the draw, it's Evans. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It's a six-yard pickup. It's still a few chain links short, it appears, with fourth down coming up. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Okay, so thought they might go for it here. Down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. And in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. Vikings 10. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. 
You sound like you're going negative on me. I was. Partner. I was. It sounds, like, it sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14 point drive, you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touch downs anymore you're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away first downs they can't touch the ball a pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31 a three yard pickup i'm sure that that's going to be the formula just keep the ball on the ground keep that clock moving and when you have the lead this late in the game above all stay in bounds Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's Griffin. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Chandler Jones picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. Stiff armed him. It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, here's Simeon. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off right around the 43. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. Well, down two scores in the fourth quarter. It maybe wasn't quite desperation time, but it was getting close. And that interception there on the deep ball, that probably slams the door on their chances. And maybe that was the thought process, that it wasn't quite desperation time. So now you take the shot before they're going to lay back any farther on defense. Go ahead and throw it downfield. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The first down carry for Davis. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Tackled at the 27-yard line. A gain of two. Brings up second and eight. They'll run it again here with Davis. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings' 20-yard line. The Browns on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Here's Seibert for the Browns field goal. This will be a 37-yard attempt. Seibert able to knock this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. Makes the score Browns 24, Vikings 10. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. At their own 25 yard line. Trevor Simeon ready to retake the field. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors, yet still play perfect football. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. 
It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 31. Looking to throw again on second down. Simeon, he'll dump this underneath for Evans. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 12. And the Vikings first on first down, Simeon. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. You know, last week I remember asking you, what would an offensive coordinator be looking for week two of the preseason? Now we're in week three. Defensive coordinator-wise, what's he looking at? For the most part in preseason, you're playing pretty basic stuff, pretty vanilla defenses. You're looking for... Now Simeon stripped. He lost the football. And I think the Browns got it. They did. Robert Griffin sacked. You know, if this is the regular season partner, we'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, you gotta worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And they sit in a good spot, having the ball back after the fumble recovery and up two scores in the fourth quarter. They'll run on first down. Davis works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. He was taking their work from the 29 on second and six. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. On the run, it's Davis. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On third down, Davis. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. A 27-yard attempt. Seibert's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. Makes the score Browns 27, Vikings 10. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? And now out comes Minnesota. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once. We were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here <laughs> and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as they continue as they continue to move forward. Yeah, yeah. probably just want to put this one behind them. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a scotch of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. 
And he'll get it all the way down inside the 35-yard line. So many times we end the game, and as we're recapping it, we're talking about what offenses did and how they won the game. Let's flip this one over. The defense, they frustrated the offense the entire ball game. That's why they're walking out of here with a victory. And they're going to love to walk out of here with that as their final act, that interception. Good way for them to end it. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. Well, partner, it's just preseason, but it always feels good to be in victory formation, taking the knee for the W. Yeah, I've often thought to myself when I watch these preseason games, some teams need the wins more than others. You know, if you're established and you're used to winning, not quite the same, but if you're trying to learn how to win, it's important to get it done and to be able to kneel down at the end, even better. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound, as we say so long from Cleveland.